So chapter 2 is on functions and relations. I've condensed all of chapter 2 into one video because it is all related and therefore only needs one video for it. So the first thing is the Cartesian coordinate system. A function and a relation will be graphed on a Cartesian coordinate system which as you can see is two axes. The x-axis is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical. And so when you're graphing equations, if you have the equation x minus y equals 3, and you're supposed to know when, what the value of y is when x equals 2. So what you do is you plug in 2 for x. So you have 2 minus y equals 3, and then you solve for y. So you get the answer of y equals negative 1. And when you solve a equation that is going to be a function relation, you want to write the answer as an ordered pair. And what an ordered pair is, is it looks like this. So this equation would be expressed as 2 comma negative 1, where it's x comma y in alphabetical order. And then you would, and then so to graph your answer, you would go out 2 along the x-axis and then down 1 along the y-axis so your point would be right about there at 2, 1, negative 1. However, this however, your equation is not just a point because it's it's actually what's called a line. And so you can find out this because as you saw we only plugged in 2 for x, but look what if you plug in other values for x such as negative 1, 0, 1, or 3 and then you solve for y, you'll get um, answers such as negative 4 for y, negative 3 for 0, negative 2 for 1, and 0 for 3. So if you plot these points on our graph, so negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and we already know we had 2, negative 1, and we already know we had 2, negative 1, and then 3, 0, you can see that This would look. What the fuck is he doing that? You can see that this order of. You can see that this order of dots would make a line, which would run just like that. And so this equation is a line, and you can see that it makes a line when it's graphed. When you're graphing a function relation, there's two different variables. The variables are the dependent variable and the independent variable. The dependent variable is the value that depends on the other variable. And so in the case of our equation above, the dependent variable was y, because the value of y depended on the value of x. On the other hand, the independent variable was the value that the dependent variable varies on. And so in our equation, the independent variable was x. So along with dependent and independent variables, a couple more vocab terms you need to know are the range. And the range is the set of values of the dependent variables. So it's whichever value y will hit. And the domain is the set of values of the independent variables. So whichever variable, whichever variables x will hit over the course of the function. So now let's look at the equation of y equals negative 2x. If we plug in some values for x, let's say we do, or 
So now let's consider the equation of y equals negative 2x, where the domain, so the x values, are the integers between 1 and 4 inclusive. So what that means is we know that the only values at, we know that the only values of x will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we only have to find the y values for those values. And the y values respectively are negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And we get those values by plugging in the x values into this equation right here. So when we graph this equation, we'll put the we'll put points on each of the x values. So there are your four points. But then because the domain is integers, not all the numbers, it's going to be a dotted line that connects the numbers. And the dotted line shows that there are only values for where there are solid points. And because the domain does not include, say, x equals 1.5, so there's no point right there. And if we look at if you're then asked to find the range for this equation, the range would be negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, and negative 8. Because those are the values that y will hit when x is in its domain. So now let's practice. Let's say we have this function and we're told to find the domain and the range. So the domain for this equation would be negative 3. So the domain for this equation would be negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4 because the x values go from negative 3 to 4. The range the range would be from negative 5 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 5. Because although the y value is not at its highest when x is 3, the y value goes from negative 5 to 5. And so it's not, the range is not the values of y when x is at its extremities, but rather when y is at its, is at its extremities. So another vocab term is the asymptote. And the asymptote is a line which a graph approaches but never touches. And this will occur when either the independent variable or the dependent variable is large in either the positive or negative direction. So either positive infinity or negative infinity. So if you consider the problem of the time it takes to get home and in your speed that you're going are related. And if you have this set of... So if you have the problem of the time it takes for you to get home and the speed that you're going are related and you're told to graph it. Well, you know two things. You know that the time, let's say that time is on the x-axis and speed is on the y-axis. It doesn't matter which is which, but... So if you're going really, really fast, it's going to take you a little bit of time. If you're going really, really slow, it's going to take you a long time. So you know that the graph will look something like this. But you know that you're never going to be able to take, you're never going to be able to go negative time, and you're never going to be able to go negative speed. So the, the asymptotes here occur on the axes, which you know that the graph will never cross over them because it's impossible for you to have a negative speed or a negative time. So now let's look at the equation of y squared equals x, and we're supposed to graph this. So we have, we make our t-chart, and let's plug in some values for x. So for x, let's do 
0, 1, and 4. If you plug in 0 for x, you get 0 for y. If you plug in 1 for x, you get 1 for y, but you also get negative 1. And the same thing happens where if you plug in 4, you get 2 and negative 2. So for each value of x, you're getting two values for y. And when we graph it, there's your 0, 0, your 1s, and then the points at 4. So if you draw the line, it looks like that, which is not a function, and I will explain that. So now comes the difference between a relation and a function. So a relation is any set of ordered pairs. doesn't matter how they're arranged. It's just you've got your set of ordered pairs. On the, however, a function is a relation that has exactly one value of dependent variable for each value of the independent variable. So what that means is that you cannot have two values of y for each value of x. So if we look at the equation from the last slide, which looks roughly like this, you can see that at each value of x, there's two values of y, and so that's not a function. However, it is still a set of ordered pairs, so it is a relation. If we were to have the same shape of a graph, it should look like that, where you only have one value of y for each value of x. And you can use the vertical line test to differentiate between a relation and a function. What the vertical line test is, is that you draw vertical lines for each value of x. And if the line hits the graph more than one time, then you know it's not a relation. Or it, if, the lines, if the line hits the graph more than one time, you know that it's not a function, but rather a relation, because the graph has more than one value of y for each value of x. So now let's practice. So if we look at this first example, if you use the vertical line test and you draw a vertical line there, then it crosses three points. So you know that's not a function, but it's a relation. And if we look at this second example, you can draw a vertical line there, crosses through two points. So that is also a relation. In this last example, no matter where you draw the vertical line, it only passes through one point. And so this last example is a function. And if you remember back to inequalities, a closed circle means that there is a point there, and an open circle means there is no point. And so on this last example, the open circle indicates that there's no point there, and which makes it a function. So let's look at this final example. So x plus y equals 2, and the domain is from negative 1 to 3. So if we plug in some values for x, let's say let's put in negative 1 for x, you'll get 3 for y. If you plug in 0 for... So let's plug in some values for x. If we plug in negative 1 for x, we will get 3 for y. If you plug in 0 for x, we will get 2 for y. If you plug in 1 for x, we will get 1 for y. If we plug in 2 for x, we'll get 0 for y. And 3 for x will give us 1. Negative 1 for y. And so when you graph it, it'll look like that, with solid points for the x values of negative 1 and 3, and 
the graph ends at those points. And so that's all that you have to graph for that. And that is chapter two.